Welcome to Power Electronics Education Electronic Book Lecture 3 Directifiers. This lecture is presented by Dr. Firuzare. The contents of this lecture are single phase half wave diode rectifier, single phase half wave diode rectifier with free wheeling diode, basically used in resistive inductive load, battery chargers single phase full wave direct rectifier with center tap transformer single phase full wave direct rectifier six phase direct rectifier three phase diode rectifier three phase full wave diode rectifier line impedance effects and finally some examples when we are talking about uncontrolled AC to DC converter that means we change the AC voltage into the DC but the point is that we cannot control the output voltage magnitude so what's happened here there are different topologies that we can use either single phase or three phase but the point is that the output voltage depends on the topology and depends on the input voltage magnitude so basically this type of converter operates at line frequency of 50 or 60 Hertz so in this case we normally get DC voltage similar like this voltage which is full wave half wave or in a three phase system we get similar voltage like this so let's start with a single phase half wave diode rectifier that means this is our converter just a single diode so suppose that the input voltage is AC similar to this voltage waveform for the first half a cycle starting from zero crossing because the output current is zero that means the voltage across the load is zero for that instant of time so because the input voltage is getting positive that means the voltage across the diode is getting positive so in this case for the first half a cycle diode conducts suppose that the voltage across the diode is almost zero so in this case the output voltage is same as input voltage but just at this zero crossing again because the load current will be zero and when the input voltage is getting negative that means the output current should be negative but because diode cannot conduct in this case diode will be off when diode is getting off in this case output current will be zero that's why the output voltage for the second half a cycle will be zero but let's look at the voltage across the diode for the first half a cycle because diode conducts assuming that the voltage across the diode is zero or vo forward voltage is zero so in this case for the first half a cycle we have this voltage and for the second half a cycle because the output voltage is zero so the voltage input voltage appears across the diode so that's why for the second half a cycle we have input voltage across the diode so in this case diode should be able to block this voltage and the current through the diode or the output current is based on load impedance in this case the output current is basically output voltage divided by resistor so here we can see that the current waveform is exactly similar to voltage waveform and the reason is that we have a resistive load now let's consider a single phase half wave diode rectifier with resistive and inductive load so the point is that when we apply positive voltage that means when the input voltage is getting in positive then the voltage across the diode becomes positive that means diode conduct and suppose that the voltage across the diode when is in on state is zero then the output voltage will be same as input voltage so let's start and consider the first half a cycle 
So for the first half a cycle, the point is that we have almost same voltage as we have in the input side, but just at zero crossing, at zero crossing, if you look at the load current, at zero crossing because of resistive and inductive load, that means the current through the circuit, the current through the inductor, through the diode is not zero. So that's why at this time, diode is not turn off. So diode conducts because the input voltage is getting negative. So that means the voltage across the load is getting negative. So that's why in this case the current through the system, through the inductor is decreasing. And just at this point, because the current through the inductor and the current through the diode is zero, so that's why at this time diode is turned off. So in this case, the turn off time depends on the load impedance. In the previous slide, we have seen that the output voltage can be negative when we have resistive and inductive load. And using this freewheeling diode, we can remove the negative part. And that's because once the, once the output voltage is getting negative, then this diode can conduct and the current can circulate through this loop. So let's start from this zero crossing again. In this case, the input voltage is getting positive. So when we have positive voltage, this diode can conduct. So once we have this diode in on state, suppose that the voltage across the diode is zero. So input voltage appears across the load because input voltage is positive for this half a cycle. That means freewheeling diode is off, so this diode is off. Now the current circulates through this loop. So this happens for first half a cycle. So at the end of first half a cycle, just at this zero crossing, because the input voltage is getting negative, so in this case this diode conducts and this diode will be off because the input voltage appears across the load and because the input voltage for the second half a cycle is negative so that's why this diode will be on and the second diode or the main diode will be off. So what's happened in this case? In this case for the second half a cycle because this diode is off the current, load current will be circulated through this diode and suppose that the current is continuous so that's why for the second half a cycle we can see that freewheeling diode conducts and for the first half a cycle the main diode conducts so the current through the first diode is this portion of load current and the current through the freewheeling diode is this portion of load current so in this case the output voltage is just same as input voltage just for the first half a cycle and the second half a cycle because this diode conducts and suppose that the voltage across this diode is zero that means output voltage is zero for second half a cycle. In diode rectifier as we convert the AC voltage into DC so it's important to find the average voltage over one cycle. So let's concentrate on this voltage waveform. In a half a wave diode rectifier, if the output voltage is same as this voltage waveform, that means for the first half a cycle the input voltage appears across the load and for the second half a cycle output voltage is zero. So now we can write the output voltage based on this equation first half a cycle, suppose input voltage is sine wave, that means this is peak value and this is sine wave and the output voltage is zero for the second half a cycle. The DC voltage over one cycle can be found based on this equation so we need to find this integration. We can split the integral into two parts. The first part is associated with this voltage waveform over 
first half a cycle and the second part is associated with this voltage waveform for the second half a cycle. So basically because over second half a cycle the output voltage is zero so that means this term is zero we just need to find this part of equation. So variable of integration is dt while this function is 2 pi t over t. So how we can find the answer? Basically in general if we have indefined integral like sinus at dt so the answer will be minus 1 over a cosinus at. Suppose a equals to 2 pi over t then we can find this equation because this term means 1 over a and this term means minus cosinus a t and basically this is a. So the lower limit of integration is 0 and the upper limit of integration is t over 2 then we can simplify this equation. So when we put the limits of the integration into this equation so basically the first part is cosine 2 pi t times of upper limit which is basically t over 2 and then this one can be simplified into cosine pi and the second part is cosine 2 pi t times of the lower limit which is 0 and this term is cosine 0. So finally cosine pi is minus 1 and cosine 0 is 1 so minus times of minus is plus that means 1 plus 1 is 2 and finally this is the DC voltage when we have a single phase half wave diode rectifier. Let's consider battery charger based on a single phase half wave diode rectifier and we have a resistor to limits and control the current. So in this case because we have a battery here so over first half a cycle when the input voltage is getting positive we cannot turn on the diode because we have positive voltage here just at this time because input voltage equals to battery's voltage then beyond this time the voltage across the diode will be positive that means input voltage will be greater than battery's voltage then diode can conduct so once diode conduct we have voltage across the load that means input voltage appears across the load so in this case if input voltage is for example is a sine wave sinus 2 pi t over t then this is the input voltage across the load and what's the voltage across the resistor basically voltage across the resistor is input voltage minus battery's voltage or that means Vm sinus 2 pi t over t minus E so in this case the voltage across the resistor is input voltage minus battery's voltage so then we can find the current through the system because current is basically current through the resistor that means the voltage across the resistor 
divided by R or Vm sinus 2 pi t over t minus e divided by r and that's this current so how to find the total power and current delivered to this battery so basically because the current through the resistor is already same as battery's current so that's why we have this current we just need to find this defined integral over this cycle and we need to find these limits of integration so it's quite easy to find these limits of integration because as we mentioned before this is a time that input voltage equals to battery's voltage so we just need to solve this equation that means V in which is basically Vm sinus 2 pi t over t equals to battery's voltage so here we can see that sinus 2 pi t over t equals to E over Vm so from this equation we can find these times the time that the diode conducts and the time that the diode is turned off or we can find these limits of integration and then we can find this region which is basically the average current over one cycle as I mentioned in the previous lectures in power electronic system we cannot use any lossy components like resistor or power switch operate in linear mode and that's because we may have less efficiency and we may have more losses so that's why to limit the current instead of resistor we can have an inductor but the point is that we need to find this integral and we need to find the limits of integration so it's easy to find when the diode conducts because again when the input voltage is equal to battery's voltage at this time diode conducts then we have current because we have voltage across the inductor we increase the current so that's why as you can see here we have current increasing and finally at this point we can see that the input voltage is after this time the input voltage is less than battery's voltage but the point is that because still the current current through the inductor is positive that means current through the diode is positive so diode cannot be turned off but because we have negative voltage across the inductor so that's why the current through the inductor is decreasing so at this instant of time the current through the diode is zero so that's why diode will be turned off and then we need to find this region this area in order to find the maximum current and power delivered to this battery so there are few advantages and disadvantages a main advantage is that we don't have any lossy component and the point is that we can improve the efficiency so to control the current to limit the current we can use a large inductor but large inductor is bulky more expensive but the case is that the turn off time depends on the inductor impedance so these are the issues that we have to consider when we design a battery charger now let's concentrate on a single phase full wave diode rectifier that means we can rectify the first half a cycle 
and also the second half cycle. So that's the output voltage based on full wave direct rectifier. So in this case, to get full wave, we need to have a transformer with center tapped. That means when the input voltage is getting positive for the first half a cycle, because the input voltage is positive, that means we have positive voltage across this secondary and we have positive voltage across this secondary. If we look at this current loop, so suppose talking about zero crossing point, so the current through the resistor is zero, so when the input voltage is getting positive, that means the voltage across this diode is getting positive, then we can turn on the diode. But at the same time, this zero crossing, because the current through the resistor is zero, if you look at this polarity, the voltage across the diode is negative so that's why for the first half a cycle D2 is off while D1 is on so that's why we get positive voltage across the resistor because of this winding and is we have same scenario when we have negative voltage. That means when the input voltage is getting negative, I'm talking about second half a cycle during over this time, so then we have negative voltage across this winding and a negative voltage across this winding. So again, talking about on this zero crossing point, the current through the resistor is zero, so because the input voltage is getting negative so the voltage across this diode is negative so this diode is off and because the input voltage is negative so the voltage across this secondary is negative so this is the voltage across the diode so that means this diode is getting on so if this diode is on the voltage across the resistor is again positive. So regardless of positive half a cycle or negative half a cycle, we have always positive voltage across the load. That means for the first half a cycle and for the second half a cycle still we have positive voltage. Now let's find the maximum voltage that the diode has to stand. For example, for the first half a cycle, this diode conducts assuming an ideal diode, the voltage drop across the diode is zero. For the second half a cycle, suppose that the turn ratio is one to one. So in this case, because over the second half a cycle, the input voltage is negative, so we have negative voltage and also negative voltage here. This diode conducts for the second half a cycle. That means we have negative voltage across the load so the voltage across this diode is this voltage plus that voltage. That means if the input voltage is sine wave Vm sinus 2 pi T over T, that means this peak is Vm. So this peak is minus 2 Vm. So in this case, the voltage across the diode, the maximum voltage across the diode, either this diode or this diode, is minus 2 Vm. And the current through the load is voltage divided by resistor. So this is the current waveform, which is almost similar to voltage waveform. In some applications, if isolation is not required, then we can have full wave diode rectifier without any transformer. So in this case, we need to have four diodes. Then we can have either resistive load or inductive load. Inductive load, in this case, we just consider as a current source because suppose that the current through the inductor is continuous then we can consider that one as a current source and then we can analyze this circuit.